often. That verse does not say you confirm yourself, does it? Who confirms you unto the end? Christ, the Lord Jesus Christ. That's his job. Who shall confirm you unto the end that ye may be what? Blameless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Come down with me to verse 30. For of him are ye in Christ Jesus, who of God is made unto us wisdom. He's our wisdom. And righteousness and sanctification and redemption. That according as it is written, he that glorieth, let him glory in the Lord. Well, who's your righteousness? Christ. Christ is your righteousness. Your righteousness is nothing but filthy rags. Your righteousness is nothing. You have no righteousness. He's our righteousness. Who's your sanctification? Christ. In Christ, you're set apart in the body of Christ. Look in Galatians chapter 3. Galatians chapter 3. Galatians chapter 3, verse 27. Well, I, I always say that, verse 26. Then I look at the verse above it and I said, well, I've got to read that and I'll tie it in. For ye are all the children of God by faith, where? In Christ Jesus. For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ. There's no, there's no water there. Not a drop. Don't let nobody put water there for you. They're pulling your leg big time. I want to show you. For as many of you as have been baptized into where? Christ. Have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female. For you're all one, where? In Christ Jesus. In Christ Jesus, those that have been baptized into Christ, are there Jew and Greek there? No. Bond or free? How about male or female? Then it can't be physical, can it? Spiritual. I've been baptized five times, if I counted right. Five times I went into the water, went under the water as a male, and five times I came up as a male. It had no bearing on my flesh. Not physical, spiritual. Then do you have his identity? Yes, you do. Turn to Colossians and look in Colossians now. This is your standing, as I said this morning. Your standing will never, ever change before God. Never. Why? You're in Christ. You are in Christ. I can't stress that enough. The religious system don't want you to see that you're in Christ. They want to control your flesh. They want to have ceremonies and ordinances to put on you, to hoops to make you jump through. Why? They want control. And you're free. In Christ. 
Now I'll look at Colossians, and if I can get there without ripping, I'm, y'all, do y'all see that right there? From Ephesians plumb to the concordance, it fell out. I'm I'm holding it right there. I and, and poor old chapter four is gone, and I'm trying. Never mind. I'm trying. That's why I'm taking my time. I, I, you know. Abuse shows you. <laughs> yeah. They don't want to work without ripping here. <laughs> that's, that's pitiful. Colossians, notice in Colossians, and let me go to chapter 3. Colossians chapter 3 now. <clears throat> and always remember, standing is the gift of God's grace. State is the fruit of that grace. And it has to do with your walk. It has to do with whether or not you honor the Lord in that body that you're in. Your walk. Your state can change. Your state will change. If the flesh, the old man, has anything to do with bothering, he will change it. You have to subdue it. You have to reckon him to be dead. You can't, you have to put him to death. You have to mortify your members which are upon this earth. That's your body. Or that flesh will hinder you from serving the Lord. In fact, before we read, go to Galatians and look in Galatians chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5. Verse, notice what he says in verse uh, 13. For brethren, ye have been called unto liberty. Only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh, but by love serve one another. For all the law is fulfilled in one word, even in this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. And the Romans chapter 13 says, love worketh no ill to his neighbor. If I love you, I'm not going to do the things, I'm not going to bear false witness against you. If I love you, I'm not going to steal from you. If I love you, I'm not going to do the law, what the law tells me not to do. Do you understand? So love is the fulfilling of the law. In the body of Christ, we are to love one another. And let me say this. The only sin that you can do in your flesh that will affect Christ is what you do to your fellow members in the body of Christ. You understand? That's why Paul said, Grieve not the Holy Spirit of God. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you. It affects other members of the body of Christ. And that affects Christ. If you wound their weak conscience, then you've sinned against Christ. Whatsoever is not of faith is sin. Well, what's the faith? Wouldn't that faith be believing God's Word? So I'm in the body of Christ. While I'm in the body of Christ, if I, as a member of the body of Christ, I begin to... Go against God's word, which affects other members of the body of Christ. What have I done? I sinned. That's my wrong. That's my work. Y'all want to just quit now? So my walk is very important to other members of the body of Christ. Now I'm to walk with wisdom toward them that are without. And you know what without is? They're not in the body of Christ. Why? Well, I'm to walk so I could try to win them into the body of Christ. That's my work. My work is people. We're going to stand before the judgment seat of Christ 
and give an account for my work, not my works. My works in the flesh has nothing to do with my standing. It has to do with my walk of how people look at me and how whether I can win them or teach them or whatever. Now look in Galatians chapter 5. He said there in verse 8, Brethren, you've been called unto liberty, only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh. In other words, I, I'm saved. I can do whatever I want to do. That's using it for your flesh. He said, don't do that. But love serve one another. For all the law is fulfilled in one word, even this, thou shalt love thy neighbors thyself. Verse 15, but if ye bite and devour one another, take heed that ye be not consumed one of another. This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Now verse 17, for the flesh lusteth. That word lust is greatly desire. For the flesh lusteth against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh, and these are contrary the one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. Why? The flesh hinders you. Where's the spirit? He said walk in the spirit. Is that some corner, dark corner somewhere? <laughs> Is that being in the Spirit? Is that falling down in the aisle somewhere, mumbling the possum up a gum tree, Hamashiach law? Is that being in the Spirit? Folks, if you're in Christ, you're in the Spirit. The Spirit is the body of Christ. That's where He's at. You're in the Spirit, and the Spirit's in you if you're in Christ. And we're to walk as in the Spirit. Our relationship to one another is a relationship as members of the body of Christ, as Christ. And we're to love one another. But look on. He said there, so that we cannot do the things that we would. Look back in Romans chapter 7. Romans chapter 7. And I know people say, well, that's before Paul got saved. That's people that don't know what they're talking about. Amen. Romans chapter 7 was written 25 years after Paul was saved. He's not talking about uh, before he got saved in Romans chapter 7. It's all present tense from verse 15 all the way to the end of the chapter. Notice what he says in verse there. Verse 15. For that which, uh, verse 14. <laughs> for we know that the law is spiritual, but I'm what? I'm a good man. Conquered sin. That's generally how to believe that they've conquered sin and the devil. Ready to go and charge hell with a water pistol. They saw the devil, they'd fall down dead. Scare them to death. Verse 14, for we know that the law is spiritual, but I'm carnal, sold unto sin. For that which I do, I allow not. According to the law now, for what I would, that do I not. But what I hate, that do I. Isn't that something? What the law forbids me to do, that's what I find myself sometimes doing. That's what he said, the flesh. The strength of sin is the law. Y'all have heard the illustration many times. You go out here, you knock a hole in that wall, and you put a thing up here, and it says, Do not look in this hole. You know what you're going to do? You're going to look at that hole. And you, you're going to wait till you think nobody's looking. And you're going to peek in that hole. You know what gave that power? That law. Do not. You see a sign that says wet paint. Do not touch. You know what? 
We watched them. They've painted some benches at a park. I said, now let's watch what these people do. Do you know people walk up to that bench and, and go on? They couldn't stand it. They couldn't pass it. Do not touch. The strength of sin is the law. That old flesh does not want to serve the Lord, the old man. Now look what he says down in verse 17. Now then it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me, the old man. For I know that in me, here it is, that is in my flesh dwelleth every good thing. No good thing. For the will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good I find not. Verse 20, now if I do that, I would not. It is no more I that do it, but sin, the old man, that dwelleth in me. I find then a law, principle, that when I would do good, good is present with me. Evil is present with me. For I delight in the law of God after the inward man. There's a new man. But I see another law in my members, warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. Oh, good man, wretched man, oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then with the mind, the new man, I must serve the law of God. But with the flesh, the old man, the law of sin. The old man wants to control my members of my body, my eyes, my ears, my hands, my feet. That he wants all the control. He wants the pleasures of life. But the Lord said, you're not your own. You're bought with a price. You're in Christ. You're His. And you're to serve Him. Now back in Colossians. That's my walk. And by the way, why are you going to Colossians? If I can get there, I can't separate my pages. If you saw this, y'all be laugh. Colossians, look in Ephesians chapter 2. Verse 10, for we are, <coughs> we are his workmanship. <coughs> Created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Look in chapter 4. Chapter 4. Therefore the prisoner of the Lord beseech you, verse 1, that ye walk worthy of the vocation wherein you're called. Your walk is in good works. Look in chapter 6. Chapter 6. And I want you to remember this because I know I won't be able to get back here in my Bible. <clears throat> Notice what he says. Verse 5. Servants, and we're servants of the Lord. Paul said he was a servant. Servants, be obedient to them that are your masters according to the flesh with fear and trembling, in singleness of heart, as unto Christ. In other words, you're in the flesh, you're to serve the Lord. We'll look at that. Not with our service as men pleasers, but as the servants of Christ, doing the will of God from the heart, 
with good will, doing service as to the Lord and not to men, knowing that whatsoever good thing any man doeth, the same shall he receive of the Lord, whether he be bond or free. Folks, the will of God is the good thing that we're to do. What is the will of God? God will have all men to be saved. So then I have a message for all men, and that's the gospel. And when I preach or present the gospel to those the world, that's a good thing. Right or wrong? Then Paul, Paul said that God's will is for all men to be saved and come unto the knowledge of the truth. Then I bring them to the knowledge of the truth. I bring them into the unity of the faith. I begin to preach the faith. And then they grow in the grace and the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. And they learn that that faith is the faith that was given to the Apostle Paul. And there's one faith. Then that's a good thing when I preach that. That's the work. I'm planting and I'm watering. I'm planting the seed of the gospel to people. I'm watering the seed of the gospel to people. I'm planting right division to people. I'm watering right division to people. I want the people to see that there is a difference. That God today is not advancing the kingdom. He's not dealing with Israel. He's dealing with the body of Christ. He's dealing with all nations today for their salvation. He's offering grace and peace to the world today his son Jesus Christ went to a cross and died for all your sins and was buried put out of God's sight and went to hell for you and God raised him the third day when he was satisfied with the sacrifice in your stead and I died with him in that day and my sins was put upon him. The Son of God. The creator of heaven and earth. Everything you see. The one that created everything. Went to a cross. And as despicable as I am. A vile sinner as I was. And I'm no good. And there's nothing about my flesh any good. It's a stench. And he went to that cross and he became what I am. And my sins was put upon him. And he died for my sins. He was my sacrifice. He's the only thing that I can go before the Father and say, you have to accept me. Not because of me. You accept me because your son accepted me. People say, well, you end up... At Folks, there's no way you can go to hell like that. Jesus Christ, that day died, I died with Him. He was buried. I was buried with Him. And on the third day, somewhere between, I don't know how long he suffered in that death. He didn't go. Listen, the Bible said he tasted death for every man. By the grace of God, he tasted death for every man. He didn't partake at all. He tasted it. And that taste caused him to cry. That taste caused him to get down and shed big tears and blood. And there he prayed, Father, if it be any other way, let this cup pass from me. You know what he said? If I can redeem you that are in this building right now, it would be as though he's saying, if I can save them any other way than me going into that death and tasting that death for them, let's do it but not my will. And it's though the will of the Father said, 
there's no other way. You have to be their substitute. They have to receive you or I cannot give them eternal life. Why? He's a just God. He's a righteous God. And He would be unjust to give you eternal life without their sins being paid for. And Jesus Christ and God, between the time He said, Father, it's finished. And He bowed His head and gave up the ghost that day. And He went into death. And I don't care what they say. I believe what that Bible says. And I believe it. The words in the King James are the ones God wanted there. And He went down. And He went down with your sins. He went down as a sinner. And I don't know how long He was in there. I know He was going into paradise. I know He went and preached to spirits in prison. But I know he went in there and he tasted that death. And he cried out. Talking about the wrath of God. And he said as the Jonah was three days and three nights in the whale's belly. So must the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. But when God said, I'm satisfied, that's when He became the propitiation, the satisfaction for God, for your sins. He, God was satisfied that His wrath had been appeased and His judgment, He had judgment on you. And Jesus Christ came up, you know something? I came up with Him, thank God. And He ascended up and He's seated at the right hand of the Father and Paul said, we're seated at the right hand we're up there in heavenly places right now we're seated in heavenly places you can't beat that that's better than the cat's cream why would anybody reject that that's my salvation that's my standing that's why I'm righteous. That's why I'm blameless. That's why God sees me in Christ. You know why? I'm in Christ. I'm so much in Christ. Notice Colossians chapter 3 now. But there are people. Look in verse four, uh, 5 again. Mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth. The members have to do with the body. The word mortify as we looked at is to put to death. It's to bring in the subjection. It's to subdue. Paul said he brought his body under subjection. Lest when I preach to others, I myself should be a castaway in the eyes of the people that I'm trying to win, and at the judgment seat of Christ. In uh, which things sake, now notice uh, fornication uh, back in 5, uncleanness, inordinate affection, and he lists them all down there. there. Verse 6, for which things sake the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience. Why are they the children of disobedience? in the which ye also walked sometime when ye lived in them. They used to be the children of disobedience. Turn back and look in Ephesians, and I hope I can get there. Chapter 2. Notice in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 2. Wherein in time past ye walked according to the course of this world, we don't walk according to the course of this world. We walk in good works. We're supposed to. According to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of who? Disobedience. 
among whom also we all had our conversation in time past in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of what? Wrath, even as others. But God, who is rich in mercy for His great love, wherewith He loved us, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together for Christ. With Christ, by grace ye are saved, and hath raised us up together, and made us sit together in heavenly places. Where? In Christ Jesus. Folks, that's the whole key. Notice what he said. These children of wrath, they're the children of disobedience. He said, among whom we all had our conversation in time past, in the lust of our flesh. Do you realize Paul was the most religious man that I know? He said he was a Hebrew of the Hebrews, a Pharisee, the son of a Pharisee. He was circumcised of the tribe of Benjamin. I mean, on and on. He said, as far as the righteousness which is in the law, blameless. But he said that's walking in the lust of his flesh. What does that tell us today? There are people today that walk in the denominational system and they're walking in the lust of their flesh. They're glorying in their religion. They're boasting in their religion. They're boasting in what they do in the flesh. They're the ones that's going to be the children of wrath someday. Why? They're not trusting in what Jesus Christ did for them on that cross. Notice what he says. Look over in chapter 4. Talking about the children of disobedience. Notice what he said. I might have told you wrong. I did. Look in chapter 5. Notice in verse 5. Ephesians 5 verse 5, For this ye know that no whoremongler, nor unclean person, nor covetous man, who is an idolatry, hath any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. And notice what he says, how he says it, hath inheritance in the kingdom of God. These are covetous men. These are whoremongers, unclean person. Verse 6, let no man deceive you by, with vain words, because, for because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. Be not ye therefore, par, be ye, not ye therefore partakers with them. Two different people. They're not to be partakers with these people. Why? They're the children of disobedience. The wrath of God's coming on them. Why are they the children of disobedience? Well, look in 2 Thessalonians. 2 Thessalonians, notice in chapter uh, 2 Thessalonians, chapter 1. It's not that they, how do they disobey God? How are they children of disobedience? There might be some children of disobedience here today. There might be some children of wrath here today. You don't have to be. Here's how you become. Here's how you are a child, a child of disobedience. 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 7. And to you who are troubled, rest with us be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels in flaming fire taking vengeance on them that know not God and that what? Obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Why are they the, you're going to get the vengeance, the wrath? They didn't obey the gospel. Well, what is it to obey the gospel? Look back in Romans chapter 10. Romans chapter 10. Now folks, I'm trying to make this as simple as I can. But you know something? People need to read their Bibles at home. People need to read the epistles of Paul themselves. That's how you grow in the grace and the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. 
You can get some here. You can get guidance here. You can hear things here. But you need to go home. You need to open your Bible in Romans through Philemon and read those epistles there over and over and over again. If you want to know the truth and grow, Romans chapter 10. Romans chapter 10. Notice what he says in verse 15. And how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, and I never have understood this part, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace. I've never seen a man have beautiful feet. How beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. I guess it's a spiritual thing. Your feet's what you travel on to carry the good news. So it's beautiful. <clears throat> now notice verse 16. Here it is. But they have not all what? Obeyed the gospel. Well, what is it to obey it? Ver rest of the verse. For Isaiah said, Lord, who hath believed our report. Do you know what it is to obey the gospel? It's to believe the gospel for yourself. Now you know the historical facts. You can, somebody can walk up to people and say, you know what the gospel is? Sure, it's Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, was buried, and God raised him again the third day according to the scriptures. That don't save you. You know what saves you? You being a sinner. You seeing yourself a lost sinner and believe it and trust it for yourself. Not just believe in the facts. Believe it for you. That he died for your sins. Everyone, everybody in this building. There's not a person in this building right now that Jesus Christ didn't die for all your sins. And He carried them away. And God dealt with your sins. Your sins is not the issue. God has already dealt with your sins. What is the issue? You won't believe it. Paul said, we have now received the atonement. When did you receive that good news? When did that news become good news to you? When did you see yourself? I'm lost. I've never been saved. But I know He died for me. And I believe that. And I'm trusting that as my salvation. Until then... You might be religious. That ain't going to get you there. You might do good deeds. That's not going to be acceptable. You might say great things. God could care less. After Him doing all He did to His Son, putting His Son through what He put Him through, suffering physically, being beat, to a pulp, having his beard pulled out, being take a rod and hit in the face and put a, a hood over him and hit him with their fist and spit in his face and strip him off naked and make fun of him and ridicule him and down him and on and on the thing goes and then he dies. He goes into that death that terrified him and God's going to accept you because you do good things. Give me a break. God will put you in the bottom of hell and laugh at you while you're frying like a ball of sausage. You say, well, I don't want to serve a God like that. You don't have no choice. He's the only one that's available. He's the only one that has life. He's the only one that can give you eternal life. 
And God commended His love toward you. And that He gave His Son to die on a cross for you. And all you have to do is receive Him as your personal Savior. Believing that He went to that cross and died for your sins. And your sin, Dad, is paid. It's done. He gave Himself a ransom. You know what a ransom is? You ever looked the word up? He gave Himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. Whereof I made a preacher, an apostle, a teacher of the Gentiles in faith and verity. Folks, it's the greatest message that I could possibly preach. That's my salvation. My walk is deeds. The children of disobedience don't obey the gospel. Now I'm going to close with this. Look in Colossians again. Chapter 3. So the ones that's doing all these things, they're going to get the wrath if they don't Obey the gospel. Verse 9 says, Lie not one to another, seeing that you put off the old man with his deeds. You reckon him dead. You put him off. You're not letting him, you're subduing him. You're not letting him control you. And have put on the new man. You're walking in the spirit. You're walking in the knowledge which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. Where? So I know it's talking about the body because where is the place? Where there is neither Greek nor Jew, just like in Galatians. Circumcision, uncircumcision, barbarian, Scythian, bond or free, but Christ is all and in all. And he talks about how we ought to walk. He talks about the wives in verse 18. Submit yourselves unto your own husband as it is fit. In the Lord. Husbands, love your wives. Be not bitter against them. See there, June, I'm not bitter. <laughs> Children, obey your parents in all things, for this is well for this is well pleasing unto the Lord. Fathers, provoke not your children to anger, lest they be discouraged. Servants, and I think verse twenty one, wasn't that genie what Devin quoted to Alan one time? Yeah. Fathers, provoke not your children to anger. Verse 22, Servants, obey in all things your masters according to the flesh, not with eye servants as men pleasers, but in singleness of heart, fearing God. For whatsoever ye do, you see that all comes up. Whatsoever ye do, ye do, ye service. It do it heartily as to the Lord and not unto men, knowing that of the Lord you shall receive the inheritance. Not what it says, is it? Shall receive the reward of the inheritance, for ye serve the Lord Christ. The reward of your inheritance has to do with your walk. It does not have to do with your standing. Verse 25, but he that doeth wrong shall receive as the reward. Instead of receiving the reward, he's going to receive the, for the wrong which he hath done. There is no respect to persons. Well, the wrong, we looked at it this morning, has to do with your service, your work. If you're not preaching, building on the foundation, gold, silver, and precious stone, it's wrong. Y'all understand? If I preach over here another gospel, I'm building on that foundation, not gold, silver, precious stone. I'm building upon that foundation, wood, hay, stubble. It's going to burn at the judgment seat of Christ. And I won't receive nothing but ashes. Yet so be saved as by fire. You see, your works don't keep you saved, they don't save you. 
Your works has to do with receiving something at the judgment seat of Christ. For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. Amen? Amen. I hope you got something out of it. Uh, I want y'all <laughs> I guess I'm going to have to I got a new one. Uh, it's not a, it's, I read through this Bible 12 times before I ever preached out of it. I tr that's how I break my Bibles in. And I'm, I'm not got that many in that new ones, but I'm going to have to break it out, I guess. Uh, but it's been a good one, hasn't it? But Lord, have mercy. I, I don't want to give up them notes. <laughs> All right. Y'all want another one? Y'all going to just sit there? If you sit there.